Hey loves, well, in today's video we're going to do something a little bit different. I am well known for my cooking more than pretty much anything I do and I want to make a video called Denture Friendly Dishes. I was cooking dinner for myself and I figured, well I got a lot of leftover Thanksgiving so I might as well throw it in a pot and make a pot pie. This is easy to eat with or without teeth. Easier with teeth, but you know, just saying. So, I'll go one by one with the ingredients list. I am making everything from scratch as I generally do. So the ingredients list, uh, Swiss, everything you pretty much had have left over from Thanksgiving. There's parsley, heavy cream, sage, celery seed, thyme, poultry seasoning, potatoes, butter, olive oil, salt and pepper. Then we have the mirepoix, but there's more than three. We're gonna start with the trinity, onion, celery, carrots. Because I had these left over, I figured I might as well just use them. Green beans and corn, and of course garlic, because what would life even be without garlic? Not a life I would want to know. I also have some green onions left over, so I'm going to throw those in there. I am going to use refrigerated pie crust because sometimes mama needs a break. Hey guys, so I'm back and this would be my second favorite trinity behind the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I've also taken the time to take the corn off of the actual cob. The reason I do that is because I love the texture in it. It stays a little bit firm, which gives you a little bit of a different texture. The one thing I didn't put so far in here is turkey. And that goes in at the very last minute because it was cooked in the bird on Thanksgiving. I'm going to turn my oven on. Take the lid off. I've had this particular pan for like seven or eight years. It is well loved, very well loved, might I add. Now that that's adequately hot, you can just kind of feel and see it's hot enough. I am going to throw my butter and olive oil in. Can you even see that? It's my first day, guys. Be nice, please. I like a mixture of olive oil and butter for flavor. While that is getting nice and hot. You guys are gonna hear my son because, well, he is awake. So first, I go with carrots and celery as I drop them on the floor. Then onions. I use a lot of onion because I like a lot of onion. Give that a little stirry stir. And I'll put in my corn. And because seasoning is literally vital to everything, remember that, I'm going to put in an adequate amount of salt and pepper. I can't find my pepper grinder, guys, so we're using this, whatever works. I am known as the spice queen, so you will see a lot of seasoning because I'm extra. I've got that on about way, way too high. On about medium heat. I 
you want to save time and you don't feel like doing all of this, there is vegetables you can buy that are frozen that will spare you a whole bunch of time. Alright, we're not going to need that potato. This potato is crazy looking, but look, we love our food, guys. No man left behind, except that guy. Bye! We're just waiting on this to saute, soften up a little bit. It smells so good. Cooking is my real passion, guys. I literally have been cooking since I was probably nine years old. This is just a turkey breast. Chop it up. I like to use a mixture of white meat and dark meat. Okay guys, so this has been cooking for probably six minutes, maybe seven, not sure. This is the time when I'm going to add in the seasoning. Sage, I don't measure anything. I just literally don't. I don't have time for that. I've been cooking long enough to know what tastes good and what doesn't. Uh, that was this organic celery seed. Poultry seasoning. I'm gonna throw in some thyme. Ooh, that's a lot. You know what? Roll with it. And some parsley. Yeah. Looks good to me. Get it smelling like Thanksgiving in here. One of my all time favorite holidays. Fun fact does not look good. Oh my gosh. The answer, guys, is yes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what's called a roux. That is just... Where you add some flour. Now the general rule is for every tablespoon of butter you use, you also use a tablespoon of flour. But I judge based off my eyes. You want it to come together and cook that flour to get rid of that raw, nasty, delicious flour taste. Okay. Now at this point, it's come together. It's coated. The bottom of the pan is coated with flour. That will be scraped up later. This is when I put in the cream. Can you see that? Alright, I use, well you can't see what it is, but I just use 8 ounces, the rest I'll use milk with, if necessary. 8 ounces in liquids is a cup, by the way. So I let that do its thing. It's going to start to thicken up very quickly. This is when chicken stock comes into play. I use two cups of chicken stock. Again, this will start to thicken up rather quickly. It's a good time to start scraping the bottom. Get all the delicious flavor. Yes, beautiful. Yes. This is also the time that I make sure that there's enough to cook the remainder potatoes and green beans. If there's not, if it gets too thick, essentially, I just add more milk. Guys, this is a super healthy dish, by the way. Okay, 
It's thickening up on me. So I'm gonna have to add milk. Because why add water when you can add fat? Now it is going to make this a little bit loose in a sense of it's not as thick as it needs to be. But the starch in the potatoes will thicken it up. Decent, but something is missing. I remembered what it was that was missing. Garlic. Cooking together. I'll throw in the garlic. If you're not trained with a knife, don't make crazy chances, okay? Take your time. Now that looks good. Where are you, garlic? Why were you hiding? There, I fixed it. So these are just going to cook until the potatoes are done. And at that point, I will be right back. I also want to check on this. Every so often, still will start sticking. So I'm going to check on this. Ooh, bubbling away nicely. What I'm going to do now is check the potatoes. Oh, they're good. I'm going to turn it off. Check for done. That's way too hot to eat, guys. It's nice and thick. What? I'm talking to the camera, baby. The best way to tell its thickness, and this is gonna be hot, like that. Woo, that was hot, boy. And that is just going to sit and cool down until I'm ready to put it in my pie crust. Your pie crust? Yeah. <laughs> you can't put in pie.
Okay guys, so real quick, the last couple of steps that I take are add frozen peas. Oh, too many. Eh. Maybe it's just enough. Oh yeah, no, that's just enough. I also work with my pie crust. I use my little ramekins that I got for Christmas and what I do is I take the bottom actually let me take the top and I cut around it Crack an egg. Mm. Isn't that the cutest little way scatter? I love little stuff. Now I'll add a little bit of water to this.
what I will do next. Because my mom always did this for me growing up. She put our names in it. Let me take the egg wash. Four hundred four hundred degree oven. This can be frozen immaculately. When I was pregnant, I would freeze it and that way I didn't have to do anything. Just make one big batch and then continue on. Alright, I'm going to put this in the oven and when we come back you will see the finished product. <laughs> That's got to cool for a long time. Thank you guys for joining in and I hope you enjoy your meal if you choose to cook this. In the future I will get better at editing and making them shorter. But till then, smile break and bon appetit.